Hey, how y'all doing? Today, we're going to make chicken and dumplings. Now, we're not just going to make uh, everything homemade. I bought some frozen dumplings. We're going to use those. But we're going to make our stock, our chicken stock, or our broth from scratch. We're going to uh, use uh, some cut up chicken thighs and chicken breasts and some vegetables. So I think it's going to be pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get started get some of the stuff cut up here and put in the pot. And I'll be right back to y'all. Okay, you see here on the stove, I've got this pot. I've got some chicken there. I've got some chicken thighs and some split chicken breast. About five pounds of chicken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some spice to them first. It's going to start our stock. I've got some rosemary. I've got some slap your mama, some salt, some black peppercorns, and a little bit of uh, what they call just uh, grilled chicken seasoning, just some brand. All right, put that in there. Season this chicken. All right, then I went ahead and I chopped up some vegetables. I got some carrots. I got some corn. And I got some celery. I got corn. I got some carrots, celery, and uh, onions in there. That's all I got. Carrot, celery, and onions. And you don't have to peel any of this. You just cut up, just rough chop it, get in these big pieces and get down here because it's going to boil a long time. And all we're looking to do is get the flavor from this. So I got them in there and just put them around, just spread them in that pot. Don't have to be in any certain, you know, order or anything. I'm going to go ahead and put some water in here. I got about, I think, uh, there's six quarts in this little pitcher here. Let's see, that's about right, about three quarters away from the top. I might put a little bit more water in there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn my heat up to high just for right now because I'm gonna heat that water up. But as soon as it first starts to bubble, as soon as I can start to boil, I'm gonna cut it way back down. I'll show you what I do then. All right, now see how that fat's kind of starting to come to the top? All that chicken fat and it's starting to bubble just a little bit up here. That means it's time we can go ahead and turn this down. Now I'm going to turn it. We're on high right now, so I'm just going to turn it down to about, on my stove, uh, a little bit below medium. Because we want to keep it doing just about like it's doing now. Just sitting there, just barely bubbling, just simmering. But if we leave it on high, it's just going to come to a rolling boil and it's going to cook everything too fast to draw all that good... Uh, good stuff out of that chicken. We want to dissolve all that fat and all that cartilage and everything else. But uh, we, you don't really have to stir it that much. I'm just kind of moving around here a little bit. We put this spoon back on here. But we're just going to let it hang out. Check on about every 30-45 minutes. Just make sure it's not boiling over too much. Adjust your temperature and let it go for at least two or three hours. Alright, I was going to take a minute while that broth is cooking to talk to y'all about my reasoning for making a homemade broth and my reasoning for not using the homemade dumplings and stuff in the chicken and dumplings. For one thing, what I've found when it comes to uh, cooking at home and making your own recipes is that the more steps you put into a dish is in, let's say you make your own sauce, you make your own roux, you make your own uh, broth, the more better quality of ingredients you get. Now, for instance, uh, you know, with this broth I'm making, I put you know fresh chicken in there, the vegetables cut up. I know what seasonings I put in there. To whereas if I bought some from the store, it may have a bunch of salt, a bunch of artificial seasoning, stuff like that. And with chicken and dumplings, you tend to get a lot of your flavor from the broth, and it's my actually my favorite part of the dish. You know, you have a nice, smooth, rich broth. Other, other um, people may disagree. They may want to buy a store-made broth, which there's nothing wrong with that. I know some people buy a boxed or a canned broth, and then they'll take a chicken. You get one of those um, already uh, rotisserie roasted chickens from your grocery store, which are good. You can cut it up, uh, pull the meat off the bone, and uh, you can put it in there. A lot of people want to do that, and that's just fine. In my, my taste, though, I like it the other way. 
And as far as the dumplings go, a lot of people may say, well, why'd you make your own broth? You don't make your own dumplings. Wouldn't it be better if you had homemade dumplings? Well, in my case, I really like those particular frozen dumplings. I think they're called Mrs. B's brand. They're rolled out real thin. And, you know, you just boil them and they come out perfect. Now, some people may want the thick, home-style type dumplings, you know, like your grandma made. You take your flour and your cold water or your cold broth and you make them. That's just fine. You can make those. It's not hard to do. You can find recipes on the Internet, see how to make those and use those. But in my opinion, for my taste, I like the thinner dumplings. And they're a lot easier for me to buy them than try to make them and roll them out that thin. So, you know, it's all about your personal preference and what you like. But in my opinion, if you make your own broth, as far as the chicken and dumplings go, it's going to turn out a whole lot better. Okay, so the stock's been going for a few hours now. It's just lightly bubbling. These chicken breasts have come onto the top. And I'm sure that these chicken breasts are very done since they've been in here cooking so long. Now, our white meat cooks faster than the, than the uh, thighs. Now I'm going to use these for the majority of the meat for the dumplings, chicken and dumplings. So I'm going to go ahead and take them out of the pot and we'll move them over to a side pan and just let them start to cool to get down to room temperature. But what I'm going to do as well with these chicken breasts while they cool is go ahead, since they've cooked so much, just pull some of these bones right off of them and I'm going to put those back into the stock. That way these bones can still give up some of their goodness to the stock and the chicken meat. I'm not going to cut it up, but I'm just going to let it cool here in big chunks. And it can sit here and cool while the, uh, the bones deliver some more flavor to the stock. Alright, now that I let that boil for a few more minutes, and if reduce down to where I want. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour in this strainer here over another pot in the sink. Get all the big stuff out. I'm probably going to end up having to strain through a smaller strainer too. But this will get most of my big stuff out. I'm just gonna move it around a little bit. Get this stuff out of here. And we got a nice pot. Stop. Perfect. So I'm gonna strain this again, maybe with my straw smaller strainer. And uh, we're gonna let it cool for a little bit. All right, now I'm going to strain it to this smaller strainer. This will get all the rosemary and the peppercorns and all that, and some of that fat out of there. So I got this, and I'm just going to set this to the side. You can already see how some of that fat is starting to come to the top. Let it cool a little bit more, and when that fat comes to the top, I'm just going to scoop it right off. Okay, what we'll do now is uh, the stock sit here and cold for a minute, and you can see the oil or the fats come to the top. So I'm going to take this ladle. I'm going to push it down in there just barely like that, just right to the surface. I'm going to let this oil come in this ladle, and I'm putting this bowl right here to get rid of it. All right, got mostly just that fat in there. Didn't lose very much stock at all. Okay, now to this chicken that we, debon we deboned and cooled earlier. We'll go ahead and take it out. I got a little cutting sheet here, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it up into cubes. Just uh, about a little three-quarter inch cubes. Just cut it little bite-sized pieces, and I'm gonna put it back in the, in the pan over there. We'll let it cool further while I get that stock back to a boil. Okay, so I got my broth 
We got the fat off the top, and I got it back on the stove in a pot. I got my chicken chopped up, and I put it to the side. Just set it back in the refrigerator because you don't want that to rise to last. And I taste my broth. Broth tastes good, except I think you'd use a little bit more seasoning. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of sloppy mama. Just about a teaspoon of each. Not much. Just a little bit tightening up. Go ahead and add all that. And I'm going to bring this broth to a boil. And I'm going to go ahead and follow the package instructions on, on the dumplings, which I'm going to bring the broth to a boil. I'm going to put these dumplings in there. I'm going to boil them according to their package instructions. And I'm going to add my chicken and my green onions. I got some green onions as well at the last minute. All right, the broth's come to a rolling bowl. I took these dumplings here out of the package. It says add one at a time to a rolling bowl. Problem is, some of these things end up non you know me stuck together. So I'm gonna do the best I can to add them one at a time. It says while stirring to this rolling bowl. So we'll just keep doing this. Now I guess it don't matter if the water, I mean, of course, this, this will not be in a bowl anymore when you start adding these cold noodles in. So keep on stirring. And adding these once a time, some of them I may break in half because they look a little bit long. Just uh, break it up a little bit and uh, get through putting these in. So I've added all the noodles here. And they're all stirring around in here just making sure they're not sticking together. And it says the next step is to turn down the heat, place the top on, let the pot sit there for 35 to 45 minutes. So I guess that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and turn my heat down. And I'll turn it down to about medium low. And I'm going to put the top on here. I'm going to let these sit here and I'm going to let them simmer and cook up. Okay. So the dumplings are boiled about 45 minutes. I took them off the heat. And I'm going to let, this, uh, let it thicken up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is uh, i got about see a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch in cold water. While it's off the heat, I'm going to add this in just a little bit by a little bit while stirring. This will help to thicken it up just a little bit. Alright, now that I stir that in, I'm going to put it back on the heat over here on the burner. I'm going to stir it. As soon as it comes back to just the first uh, little bit of boil, I'm going to go ahead and add my chicken. Okay, so it's just starting to boil now. It's bubbling up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add all this chicken I chopped up. chicken. Now I'm going to add these green onions. We'll stir it in just for a second. Okay, well it's still hot, so on about medium high heat. And it was just first starting to boil. We'll stir all that in. And I'm going to cover it. We'll turn the heat off. Yeah, I'm gonna let it sit here about 15 minutes just to sit and let all the juices get back in that chicken and cook those green onions. Okay, so here it is. I've just been sitting about 15 minutes with the chicken and everything in there. And I tell you, this will be even better tomorrow. It's one of those dishes when it gets cool and it sits overnight in the refrigerator, it gets even a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna plate some of this up, and it's gonna be good. It looks great.